is Brittany Madison, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Okay, now I'm blowing up. Okay, here. sorry. Yeah. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So ESPN, who's always following PBC's lead, they did their version of an epilogue show starring Teofimo Lopez versus Pedro Campa. And I'm not trying to say this is the first time ESPN has ever done it. I'm just saying they're chasing Showtime success when it comes to their all-access series, like the Javante Tank Davis versus Romero all-access and epilogue, which was extremely successful. So anyway, once again, Teofimo Lopez, he beat Pedro Campa this past weekend, and one of the spectators that was there watching the fight live was another ESPN top-ranked fighter, undefeated prospect by the name, or top contender, by the name of Arnold Barboza. For those of you guys who don't know, Arnold Barboza was originally supposed to be Teofimo Lopez's next opponent when it comes to his comeback. At least that's what top rank wanted. Teo, he decided to go against the grain and he chose an easier opponent in Pedro Campa. To this day, Bob Arum is still saying he would like to match up Teofimo Lopez with either Arnold Barboza or a Jose Ramirez. So with that being said, right after Arnold Barboza watched Teofimo Lopez beat Pedro Campa, this is what Arnold had to say about his performance. You know what, look, look man, like I always said, I don't knock T.O. as a fighter, right? He's, he's a good athlete, but you know what, I've seen a lot of things today that at 140, it ain't gonna happen, bro, trust me. Not against me. That, if that was me in there, the fight would be way different, I guarantee you, I promise that. All right, guys, now listen to what Teofimo Lopez said in return about Arnold Barboza. I'm just gonna go ahead and read the text. I got it on the screen for you guys. T.O., he says to top rank, but please do not set me up with that bum over there, Arnold Barboza. I need bigger fish. It's a waste of my time. Now listen, guys, this is what makes fighters like Teofimo Lopez or Roly Romero, fighters like that, this is what makes them look so bad. Because if you're going to decide not to fight someone who is a good fighter, the least you can do is at least give him the respect he deserves. It makes you look worse when you contradict yourself by saying, don't give me that bum over there. But then you just fought Pedro Campa, who's not even ranked. So if Arnold Barboza is a bum, how do you justify fighting Pedro Campa? And you can't say it's, oh, well, I was coming off of a loss. You can't say that because according to Teofimo Lopez, he didn't lose the fight. They set him up. He got robbed, et cetera, et cetera, right? It comes off as very disingenuous. When you insult the fighters that are calling you out that you know deep down is a serious threat. Once again, he's calling him a bum and begging top rank not to put him in the ring with this guy, but he never begged top rank not to put him in the ring with Pedro Campa. How is Campa not a waste of your time, but Arnold Barboza is? You guys probably remember, I just recently did the video right after Lopez beat Pedro or Pedro Campa, and I told you guys, I don't see Teofimo Lopez beating any of the top dogs at 140, including Arnold Barboza. You know, guys, this epilogue that Teofimo Lopez did, it was extremely revealing. It told us things that I had already been telling you. It just confirmed everything that I've been saying. When it comes to Teofimo Lopez's low self-esteem, when it comes to his lack of confidence from him losing to George Cambosis. Now, you guys see the image I have on the screen, I've had on the screen for a while, where this is T.O. celebrating with his father and he's telling everybody, we told you, we told everybody. And I'm sure everybody's question when he said that was, you told everybody what? What did you tell us in particular? That's not the time where you say, I told everybody. Now, if T.O. would have avenged his loss to George Cambosis, and then he said, I told everybody, it would make more sense because then you could say, yeah, I told you guys I wasn't 100%, and this is the version you see when I'm 100%. If T.O. beat anyone that he's not expected to beat, that's when you say, I told everybody. Not when you pick the safest, easiest opponent to build up your confidence. Matter of fact, let's get back to Teofimo Lopez's confidence. They say a picture says a thousand words, right? 
Well, I put together a couple pictures after Teofimo Lopez beat Pedro Campa. And the first thing you notice is how emotional Teofimo Lopez is. Like a big burden has been lifted off of his shoulders. You look at this image right here and you can see the way Teo is hugging his father as if he won the gold medal in the Olympics or as if he won a world title, maybe even for the first time perhaps. But look at the caption. This is what Teofimo's father said to him as they were hugging. He said, you gotta show that all the time. Believe in yourself, baby. He says, believe in yourself. Guys, I won't be surprised if Teofimo Lopez is the next fighter to jump on that mental health bus. Listen guys, when you lose to someone, but you feel you were robbed, and you feel you have this good excuse for why you lost and you could do so much better if you were 100%, you're not going to lose confidence. Your father wouldn't have to tell you to believe in yourself if you know exactly why you lost in the first place. I mean, just think about this. How often do you hear a father or a trainer or both tell his fighter after his fighter just beat a complete underdog a massive underdog. He tells them, you have to believe in yourself. You can accomplish anything. Anything is possible, because that's basically what he's saying to him. He's revealing to us that Teofimo Lopez, he was destroyed. Mentally, psychologically, he was devastated from that loss to George Cambosis. You know, unlike Teofimo Lopez, when Jamel Charlo was in a similar situation, when he had the draw against Brian Castaño, and there were some people saying that Castaño was robbed and Jamel should have lost the fight, we didn't see this lack of confidence from Jamel Charlo going into a rematch, because first of all, Jamel took the rematch that Teofimo Lopez never wanted to take. And after Jamel Charlo knocked out Brian Castaño in a rematch, there was nobody telling Jamel Charlo to believe in yourself, baby. You can accomplish anything. You just got to believe in yourself. Teofimo often talks about being great. But if he truly wants to be great, then he should have already known. The greats, when they took a loss, they avenged those losses. They couldn't wait to take the rematch. And that's something that Lopez didn't do. He blames it on moving up to 140, but guys, I'm telling you right now, T.O. actually might have been better off staying at 135 because he's going to do much worse at 140. It's a different ball game at this higher weight class. T.O. Fimo's one-punch power is no longer as effective as it was at 135, and we've seen that in the Pedro Campa fight. You guys have to remember, Pedro Campa, he has one loss, but he was knocked out by a guy who had a record of 11 wins and eight losses. And it took Teo hundreds of flush punches to get Pedro Campa out of there. We all know Pedro would not have last three rounds if he was in there with a Javante Tank Davis. So for Teo to use the excuse, oh, you know, I was killing my body at 135. Well, things about to be much worse at 140. I can guarantee you guys that. He's not gonna get too many big wins. And I will close out by saying this. The only way T.O. Fimo can justify begging top rank not to put him in the ring with Arnold Barboza is if he really is going to take a tougher challenge than that in his very next fight. If he does that, then it's justified. If his very next fight is against Regis Progre, and I say Regis Progre because I believe Regis is gonna beat Zepeda. Because uh, T.O. did call out Regis Progre, so that means he believes he's going to beat Zepeda as well, and he called out Josh Taylor. If he's not fighting one of those guys next, then he better be fighting someone who's ranked way higher than Arnold Barboza, someone who's way more dangerous, or even some opponent they will match him up in a title eliminator bout. Because once again, you can't call this man a bum and say Arnold is a waste of your time and then turn around and fight another Pedro Campa. Something else Teofimo Lopez doesn't realize. He doesn't understand. You telling ESPN on camera, you begging them not to put you in the ring with Arnold Barboza, you don't even realize it, but you just actually made that fight even bigger. Because now people are like, wow, this Arnold Barboza, he must really be dangerous. In fact, 
the epilogue that ESPN put up on their website, they actually used Lopez's quote of him saying, please don't put me in the ring with Arnold Barboza as the title of their video. That tells you that they feel that that stood out more than anything else in that whole episode. So once again, you just put even more pressure on yourself to fight this guy. So we'll see what Teofimo decides to do. But man, I truly believe it's all downhill from here on when it comes to Teofimo Lopez. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swell and inflammation and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. My name is Chris and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at South Carolina's and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up and I saw one for SMP and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after and I was looking at that and, they, you know, it caught my attention so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. And before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done. Three, two, one. Genesis and Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, Visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.